You know how it is. You're waiting for a bus for, it seems like, hours, and then two come along at once. Same thing has happened to me with these e-scooters. Looking at the configuration here, they appear to be identical. They're kind of no-name brands. One is a U-Move, the other one, uh, as they say in Spain, a Marca Blanca. It has really no name on it. They both have some issues. Let's take a closer look. This white one then, if we power it on, uh, the screen goes off immediately. Rather than the standard charger, I like to use this little benchtop charger that I made. I'll put a link up there to my video on this little unit, it's very very handy. Set for 29.4 volts and I can limit the current. If we put this guy on charge now then, it takes very very little current. If I attempt to power it on again, now it comes on and immediately it's gone up to 29 volts. And again, as you can see on the display there, drawing virtually zero current. If I remove the charger now, we can see that the voltage drops immediately and the thing turns off. Moving our attention to the other one now, attempt to turn it on and there's nothing at all. Once again, plugging in the charger, it draws no current whatsoever. Trying to turn it on does nothing whatsoever. So this guy seems completely dead. Clearly then, both of these guys have got some serious issues. The only way to find out what's going on is to take them apart, check the wiring and the batteries, and see where we go from there. Having never taken one of these apart before, this should be really interesting. A 4mm Allen key seems to fit, and my suspicions are aroused because that seemed to be rather loose on there. I have a feeling, gut feeling, born of years of experience, that perhaps somebody has been in, in here before. Inside the tube here then, no surprise, there's the connection for the charging port and the two cables here for the display and for the throttle brake. We're going to need to remove all of these anyway. Connection here for the front light, so that's going to have to come off as well. The charging port then just on that JST connector. Put that to one side. Wondering how we get this top part off. I can see no way to easily remove this piece and therefore I've removed the heat shrink and it's the type of heat shrink that has like hot melt glue inside it so they're quite difficult to get apart. That's the one for the light and finally the one for the display. Thankfully they are all different sizes therefore there's no need to label anything we should easily be able to reconnect what we need to do. I suspect then that everything goes out through the base of this tube. That's where we're going to investigate next. As I say, I've never taken one of these apart before, but this area here looks to be promising. And once again, the bolts are suspiciously loose. Removing the last bolt then, or is it a screw? It's a screw, it's threaded all the way along. We can now remove this, it appears. No idea what's just dropped out there. Ah, right, okay. Some sort of spacer type piece. Lots of uh, lovely black stuff. Now, who knows what that could be? Ah, <laughs> ah. I don't know if you can see that, but it's actually shorted out there. This, I guess, is the connection that goes down to the motor. It can't be very much else. And I can see the copper and the brakes and the wire there. Let me see if I can zoom in on that a bit for you. Brought in to play my desk magnifier. And hopefully you can clearly see there the damage to the wires 
We can see the copper inside, and this black soot is clearly smoke damage. This must have been quite entertaining when it went up. What quite goes on here, I don't know. That's loose, possibly broken. I've no idea how we get into that. Oh, that. Uh -huh. well, that appears to go up and down on there. Oh, and that drops out the bottom. What the connection is to the motor at this point in time, I have no idea. I'll investigate that later. Let's pull the rest of the gubbins out of this tube and then hopefully we can see more clearly the rest of the damage. First thing then, removing the little side cover here, the cable passes down and then through the hub onto the motor. This appears to be a continuous cable. There's no connection in the middle there. That is going to be interesting, even more interesting. <laughs> I hope you can see down there, this is the main battery cable, which has got a cut in it, or at least one. I think the other cable is also damaged. And even looking at the loom itself, this must have been uh, manufactured on a Friday afternoon. They're all rushing to get home. There are wires that have been caught and jammed when it was being assembled. The thing, frankly, is a bit of a mess whether the battery itself has survived, or whether there's any protection inside here, uh, I've yet to discover. Next thing I'm going to do then is to try and find some way into here and see if there's any life left in the battery. Final part of the teardown then. The motor controller, clearly rated 24 volts, under voltage protection at 20.5 volts. LCD instrumentation. 250 watts, 12 amps. I have to have a scan of this QR code, see if that gives me anything of interest. The final part of the disassembly then. On the end of the battery there is an XT30 type connector, which is the main power connector. And as we saw previously, this is the JST charging cable. This actually was the cable that had the cut in it. Whether it's actually cut right through at this moment in time, I know not. We'll take a closer look at the battery in a moment. Those two cables then passed up through the bottom here with a suspicious wear stroke smoke mark on it and emerged here. This then the XT connector mate for the power and this the three motor wires. The other connection that comes up goes to this which is for the magnets or the Hall effect sensor which senses the speed of the motor. Once again evidence of uh, extremely poor wiring. Not only was I surprised to find that the main motor wires are in fact solid conductors, as you can probably see here even this one has a, a nick in it where it's been pinched or cut with something. The appalling quality of the wiring in this is, uh, is quite staggering. I think the retail cost of this somewhere in the region of 290 odd euros. I would expect uh, something better for my money. The long tube is the battery. It gives us the specification on it, so not surprisingly it's containing 18 650 type cells in a 7S 2P arrangement. So that's seven in series, two in parallel, giving us our nominal 24 volts. It's a four amp hour pack, 105 watts. Somewhat ironically, it says on it, do not short circuit, do not disassemble. You may have realized by now that I should be ignoring that good advice. Looking at the other end then, as I said, the battery connection and the charging connection, we can just see peering down into the unit that there is a board in the first compartment here. That will be a BMS or battery management system which will be controlling the charge and discharge and protecting the battery. Once I get it apart we'll find out how good it did its job or not. I think the battery teardown and analysis will be the subject of a separate video. Watch this space. That then concludes the teardown for this video 
and at this point with the motor wiring burnt out I'm pretty much sure that finding a replacement cable for that will be nigh on impossible and given the fact that the main battery is best suspect at worst case completely shot and that is the most expensive component in any e-scooter or e-bike a replacement one of these will run close to a hundred euros so that in conjunction with the issue with the motor for most normal people would make it beyond economic repair as you've probably realized by now I am not one of those normal people so look forward to a follow-up video in the not too distant future thanks for watching